go bell. Big go bell. Big go bell. Whatever we said about America, just don't. Oh, oh, hey, hey. He's charming, isn't he? <laughs> Absolutely. So we have Anne LeMay. She's the narrative director. Narrative. Sorry, narrative director at WB Games Montreal and America Young. She is portraying Batgirl. Ooh. <laughs> Never gets old, by the way. <laughs> Every time she says that. We're going in a circle. Uh, so these guys are going to start off and then we're going to close. Oh, you guys are still so much more surprised than that table. <laughs> um, so my question would be um, more on the game line. Um, do you, are they going to be um, specially outfits? Like, you know, like Arkham Origins that you said you could get different armor sets as yes, you went? Yes, we've got a series of different outfits themed across all four okay. nights. All four nights. Okay. That was my story. Okay. Uh, how did you settle on uh, Jason and Tim rather than Stephanie and Dave? Um, I'll be really honest. Um, partly it was a question of gameplay. There is some history there that I was not party to because of, of how things were when I joined the project. Um, but our intent with all four characters was really just to give you very four distinct personalities and distinct play styles. Uh, we're making a game with four main characters and we did everything custom for all of them. So we really wanted to be able to exploit those differences to offer a really unique experience for character. Watch me for you a good animation movie. What's a good animation movie? Yeah, for you. That, that, I've, that I've watched that I've loved? Yeah, for example. I just watched uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. Yes. Yeah. And that was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and Toroto. I just watched again recently and fell in love with all over again. Thank you. Uh, which version of like Batgirl did you want to bring to your particular character? Like, did you want to play her super serious, like funny light? Like, how did you how did you come at this particular role? Um, I I love humor. Um, it's it's a little bit hard because in this game she's always the adult in the room, right? With those four guys or those two guys, three guys. Um, but uh, I like tried her sincerity, her earnestness, and her humor were the things that I tried to bring to the table. Really. <laughs> Uh, it's more kind of about the plot. Uh, without spoiling anything, you know, that man is dead. We're, we're going to get all the answers to how, why, where, and how that happened. Can you say anything specific? <laughs> Absolutely cannot. Do you want to ask another question? <laughs> uh, yeah. American Sweet, uh, you're playing such an iconic, strong uh, character. What is it like uh, for you personally to, to, to be that? That's, that's you. You're back. What does that mean to you? you are, I, 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 every time someone says that, um, it, I, I, uh, I grew up, I grew up with comic books. I grew up specifically in, with reading Batman. Um, uh, my, my dad's best friend, uh, his uncle was Bob Kane, and so like I was always involved in, in, in this world. And Batgirl is somebody I've always identified with, with all her different versions. Um, there's been so many beautiful versions of her, um, and I, I remember. I had found out I booked the job and I was so excited. But it wasn't until like a couple days later where I was driving in my car and it occurred to me that because I booked the job, that meant DC Comics said I booked the job. And the DC Comics put their stamp of approval on me playing Batgirl. And I nearly had a car accident because it hit me so hard. My hands started to shake, I started to cry. Like to, to have, have admired a world for so long my entire life and to have all of a sudden found myself approved to buy it, um, I don't, I mean, I, I it's, it's an unbelievable experience. This is four characters narratively how big is the game, like does each character get a second focus alongside everyone else? Every character gets custom lines per level, per cinematic, and they get each of character arc with multiple cinematics in it. It was a lot of writing, but because we wanted to that to be part of the experience, because gameplay and animation were doing the same thing on their side, unique animation sets, unique gameplay per character, we had to rise to the occasion and bring that too. So it's four games so in one. So four games in one is definitely the way you can go about it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> is a really big deal. Yeah. I asked Christopher this question, uh -oh. so I'll throw it to you as well. Without giving me any spoilers, because she's right here, and I'm pretty sure she'll say it. Yeah. Where is Barbara? Where is Barbara at the beginning of this? Like, oh, you know. well, that's, a, that's a great question. One of the things that I 
love about the game is that it's not an origin story, right? We've, we've seen enough of these, and we've seen a lot of Batman origin stories. Um, these characters coming to the table already with in-place relationships that, that and a lot of baggage and a lot of things. And so finding out that her, her mentor, her second father figure is dead, and then having to fill in and figure out what that means for her and what that means for her relationship with Gotham, but then have to deal with these three guys who are all up in her face, right? It, it's, it's nice that they don't get along that much at first. They're, they're trying to figure out who they are as themselves without Bruce in their lives, but also what that means to what they are to each other. And it, it adds beautifully complex and a lot of times humorous um, uh, interactions between the three guys. I'm going to add a note to this because I'm pretty sure she's being careful for spoilers, but um, we never forget Jim Gordon on this. Oh, wow. It's also very important to that. Yeah, that, that is funny, yes. I won't tell you how, but you know, he is definitely a part of the. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I should speak up. Batgirl and Jim Gordon are two of my favorite characters, so I'm sitting here and I'm like, Jim. Dude, you're going to be happy about some of the stuff we did, I hope. Yeah. Anyway. So, Batman came without Batman. From a narrative perspective, was that difficult or was it freeing? It was liberating. Why? Liberating. It was liberating, not because Batman isn't a fun challenge to take on. That would have been just a different kind of game, right? But we really got to take on characters that aren't the main headliners in games usually, right? Um, that have fleshed out and loved and had so many good writers take a turn at them to write them and instead take that and make these are characters in this game. Within the story, a very iconic Batman story, which is Court of Eyes, right? And then growing beyond that and layering over that. Um, these are all characters my team loves. Um, we had writers going, I want to write this one and I want to write this one, right? Like. We came to this very excited and very enthused about it. Like I hope it's reflected in the work that everyone sees it. But um, it, it's just a different challenge. That's all it is, really. It's just we got to do something different. Yeah. Do, do you still have time, Joe? Can you do another round? Wait, yeah. Scott, look at go. Yes. With, with four stories, go, with four stories going on in round, how long was the pro work, uh, writing process before going into production? That's a good question. Um. It was a lot of negotiations and conversations with other teams, actually. Long before we sat down, like, I knew what we were going to do. I had to make sure everyone else agreed and committed to that. Um, we worked with Wilson a lot. He was part of our, like, we, we have the whole writing review process internally, but before we sent anything for approval to DC, we would sit down with Wilson, and our final writing room approval was with Wilson in the room. So he could, because he was going to take the cinematics after and do four versions of each. Wow. Like, you know, like not the whole thing, but each, each night was going to get a different shoot. Yeah. So he was part of it. He Sometimes he would just like, this is too complicated. Most of the time he was like, oh, you want to do this? That sounds really cool. Let's just do it. Or he'd come and go, we can do this crazy thing instead. And he'd be like, really? Really? You're going to let us do that? Okay, yeah. Let's do it. We're not. We're not gonna. The, the term she used before is he enabled them. <laughs> he enabled them to do whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. No. It, 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 and it was a really fantastic collaboration. But without that, this game would not exist. Yeah. Nice. Uh, being that it's largely a court of all story, were Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo involved at all? In the um, yes, when you get to Patrick Redding, ask him that question. Okay. <laughs> he will have he will have more of the details and answers for you for that for sure. Okay. He's next. <laughs> Which are your command punch with bad girl? Which are your command punch with bad girl? What am I? I'm so I can't hear. Come on, punch. Comment the common traits. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we, I usually feel like I'm the only adult in the room when I'm <laughs> I, I come, I come from stunts, that's yeah. my background, and so, um, that dynamic of being the only girl in a big group of, uh, muscle-bound boys, um, is something that I'm very used to, so there's that, um, but, uh, also the nur nurturing and the, and using humor as a, as a defense is the other thing. But also just her expertise, right? Yeah, her expertise. And she's the hacker, she's the one who brings yeah. that to the table, yeah, and she gets to nerd out with Robin a lot too. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's the, that's the great thing is, is that with each of these guys, she's got something she connects with them on. Um, sometimes a little bit of surprising. Yeah. <laughs> There's the one to can put together. Yeah, we had some conversation with one particular uh, of the other nights that cracked me up so much. <laughs> 
uh, casting down to like these four particular roles, I can imagine you've seen like hundreds of different people. What narrowed it down to those four for you? Um, honestly, we wanted to cast not just for good actors, we wanted to cast for good people. Mm. We wanted to build a team of actors who would gel and work well together, and that was like definitely a part of our casting was, so we didn't just do the read and go. We would spend 15, 20, 30 minutes with each audition, doing a different read, asking questions, getting to know a little bit of the person, just to get a sense of things and go, okay, yeah, no, this, this feels like a good cast. And I think we phenomenally lucked out. Like our casting is just fantastic. The first time they got on set and they gelled, we were like, oh, this is it. Like these characters are just coming together. But it wasn't just the characters coming together, it was their actors coming together. Every time the four of us hang out, I mean, I remember the first time we all went out to dinner after our first day of shooting and every single one of us was doing what our character would do in this situation. Um, uh, Steven was brooding and, and Sloan was like researching the menu and uh, and Christopher was like charming the waitress and it was just like this whole big moment where I was like, oh, oh yeah, this is right. Feel like family. This, this yeah. is right, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Right. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. These are incredible questions. So ask them that question. Yeah, get them with that question. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.